we want to use the shell method or tubes to determine the volume of the solid formed by rotating the region bounded by y equals x squared, y equals zero, and x equals two in the first quadrant about y equals negative one. Let's first graph the bounded region as well as the axis of rotation. y equals x squared is this parabola here, y equals zero is the x-axis, and x equals two is this vertical line. So this yellow region is the bounded region, and y equals negative one is this red horizontal line. So if we rotate this bounded region about y equals negative one, we would get this solid here, which we want to find the volume of. Whenever using this shell method to determine a volume of revolution, it's helpful to sketch a rectangle in the bounded region that is parallel to the axis of rotation. So we'll use this red rectangle here to help set up the integral to determine the volume. Notice how if we were to rotate this rectangle about y equals negative one, we would get one shell of volume. Now to use the shell method, when we have a horizontal axis of rotation, we use this formula here, where the volume equals two pi times the integral from c to d of p of y times h of y integrated with respect to y, where p of y is the radius function and h of y is the height function, and we'll be using this rectangle to help us set this up. Before we do this though, notice how the thickness of this rectangle would be delta y, which indicates we do integrate with respect to y. Now using our rectangle, p of y would be the distance from the rectangle to the axis of rotation, which would be this distance here, and h of y would be the height of the rectangle, which would be this distance here. Now let's work on determining p of y. There are actually two components to p of y. First we have the distance from the axis of rotation to the x-axis, this distance here, which is always equal to one, and then we have the distance from the x-axis to the rectangle, which would always be equal to y as we integrate from zero to four along the y-axis. Let's go ahead and fill in the values here, two and four. So this tells us that the function p of y, the radius function, is equal to one, plus y. Now let's work on determining h of y, which can be a little tricky. Notice how the distance from x equals two to the y-axis, of course, is always two units. So this length is always two units. And then the horizontal distance from the y-axis to the corresponding point on the graph of y equals x squared would be this distance here, which would be x, that's controlled by y equals x squared. So h of y looks like it would be equal to two minus x. We need to express this horizontal distance as a function of y, not as a function of x. And because it's controlled by y equals x squared, what we need to do is solve y equals x squared for x. So starting with y equals x squared, we'll take the square root of both sides of the equation. So we'd have the square root of y equals the square root of x squared. And because we're in the first quadrant where both x and y are positive, we can say that the square root of x squared is equal to x, and the square root of y would just be the square root of y. And therefore we can express this horizontal distance here as x equals the square root of y. Again, this is necessary because we need to express h of y as a function of y. So now we know that h of y would be equal to two minus the square root of y. And now we have all the information we need in order to set up the integral to determine the volume of our solid. The volume V is equal to two pi times the integral of P of Y times H of Y, which would be the quantity one plus Y times the quantity two minus the square root of Y, which I'll write as Y to the one half, integrated with respect to Y, and now for the limits of integration, Again, going back to the bounded region, integrating along the y-axis, we'd integrate from zero to four. Let's go ahead and find this product next. So we'll have the volume V equals two pi times the integral from zero to four of, one times two is two, and then we'd have minus y to the one-half, and then we'd have plus two y, and then we'd have minus y to the three halves. Let's go ahead and evaluate this on the next slide. Integrating with respect to y, we'd have two y minus 
y to the three halves divided by three halves, or two thirds y to the three halves, plus two times y squared divided by two, that's going to be plus y squared, and then minus y to the five halves divided by five halves, or minus two fifths y to the five halves. Now we need to find big F of b minus big F of a, so we'll have two pi times, when y is four, we have two times four minus two thirds times four to the three halves, plus four squared minus two fifths, four to the five halves, and notice how when y is zero, all the terms would be zero. So simplifying, we have two pi times eight, two thirds times four to the three halves is equal to sixteen thirds. So we have minus sixteen thirds plus sixteen minus two fifths times four to the five halves is equal to sixty four fifths. So we have two pi times, all of this simplifies to eighty eight fifteenths. So the exact volume is one hundred seventy six pi divided by fifteen cubic units. Or as a decimal approximation, this would be approximately thirty six point eight six one four cubic units. So here's the exact and approximate volume of the solid formed by rotating this bounded region about y equals negative one, which would be this solid here. I hope you found this helpful.